Charlie. Yes. I have to say, I absolutely loved the film. I really, Aww. I really did, and that's not joshing, and I'm not, I'm not, I was bawling the whole way through. There's such a metaphysical, there's love and there's everything else, but there's such a metaphysical uh, element in it about why we're here. And why. Do you, does that mirror your views? I don't know. I mean, I think the, one of the lovely things about the script was that it has such a kind of unabashedly romantic uh, and sentimental look at love and, and the idea is that love survives loss and that it transcends time and stuff. And it's, I mean, poets and filmmakers and painters and writers are trying to quantify and trying to describe the essence of love and distill it into language for centuries. And some people have good success at it and others, but nobody can really crack it, you know? So I, I think the idea of this story existing in the world of the metaphysical and having some supernatural elements are kind of Akiva's cinematic way of saying that love sometimes is, is too big to be owned in just the physical world that we live yeah. in, you know, that it, that it does it does transcend time and it is something that that is that is eternal i've never loved much before so death hasn't been something to be avoided but now when i think of losing her is it possible to love someone so completely they simply can't die you know that sense of, of the, the sort of guardian angel and thinking of the scenes where, where people who have been in the past, not to give away anything, but people yeah. in the past come back. Yes. Have you ever had, uh, Jessica, a, 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 um, an example of that where somebody has a function greater than just their normal humanity? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think fa um, family, my grandparents I'm very close to, and sometimes they don't have to say anything. By example, of kind of help me find my way without giving me, like, go that way sort yeah. of sense about it. Sometimes mm -hmm. people come into your life and sometimes they're in your life forever and sometimes it's just a brief time but it can change your path. But, yeah, I suppose it can happen. Beverly. Her name was... Miss Beverly. As an actor yeah. myself, yeah. what I'm interested in, what both of you uh, have done, is that. I grew up watching Mary on television every day of the week. Thanks a lot. I know. Know. You made me feel 100. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm also pretending that I've grown up, I'm saying, which is yeah, not true, of course. Okay. I think these kind of parts are the most difficult ones to play because there's no cynicism. You can't be cynical. You yeah. have to hang it on. D did you feel vulnerable while playing them? There's nowhere to hide. You're right. There's nowhere to hide in a film like this because the whole thing is about people coming from out of the shadows. It's a, it's a, it's about entering the light. It's about exposing yourself. It's about um, engaging with your own vulnerability and giving that vulnerability over to a person and trusting that they won't abuse it. Mm -hmm. So with that in mind, yeah, it's, it's, you know, you'd be fairly naked in a story like this. Yeah. Yeah. Because you've nothing. There's no sin again. Yeah, yeah, not at all. There's no so edge in it. Open. This yeah. film does not attempt to be cool. Yeah. Um, you know, and there's nothing kind of, there's nothing acerbic in any of the humour. If there is moments of humour, they're very, it's very pure and very sweet as well. What's the best thing you've ever stolen? I'm beginning to think I haven't stolen it yet. 